Uh, kitchen. There's another room back here. It's like a bit of a... Oh, it's the garage, I think. Huh, grab book. There, yeah, Santa Pariah. Uh, yet another thing published by Unknown Dimensions. Uh, from Unknown Dimension. First, let me say that I hope this missive finds you well. Hell, it feels like a goddamn miracle that it finds you at all. Do you know how long we've been trying to track you down? Worry not, we aren't the feds, we, the men in black, or any other sort of creeping fascist hobgoblins. In fact, we're on your side. Let me start from the beginning. Unknown, unknown Dimension is what you might call a specialist publishing house. We traffic in the weird, the ahead of its time, the lost but not forgotten by a small but dedicated group of plugged in bibliophiles type of out there mass market shunning visionary expression that refuses to be taken on anything but its own terms. We've had an unparalleled run since our inception four years ago, unearthing and reviving Christ or zombie like. Uh, what timeless works such as N. N. Bessman's Message of the Message of the Snake Men, It's Inside Me, by Jens Keller and Emil Krieger's oft banned Venusian Flesh Traders. But ever since we discovered the tattered copies of your accidental series at a church rummage sale in Long Branch in New Jersey, we've been trying to track down the author of this weird and dark American outsider art. It's just the kind of forgotten portal into the twentieth century civilization's anxieties and delusions that our readers readers lose their minds over. James Bond and Harrison Ford might be the dick swinging heroes that modern suburban American America wants, but John Russell, the mild mannered insurance agent by day, reckless history revising sociopath by night, is the twisted peacekeeper that it deserves. It is our mission to bring him back to life. Okay, so I've typed plenty. What do we want from you? We want your permission to reprint the work since your original publisher, Mercury Books, folded a decade ago. We want you to supply a new forward for the books to appear in brand new editions of The Accidental Saviour and the Accidental Pariah to be produced by Unknown Dimension as a limited run and marketed directly to our highly discerning customer base. And we want you want to offer you a portion of the proceeds contract to follow, assuming you're interested in coming along with us on this weird odyssey. We look we looks forward to embarking with you and to thrusting your work screaming back into the sweating palms of an unsuspecting American public. It's about time. Blast off. When was this? March twenty eighth. Oh, this is quite recently. Republished, good for him, but these guys sound less than professional. Okay, so this is the shed. Bite and uh hello. Sam, your mother and I will be away for a long weekend celebrating our anniversary June third to the seventh. We will be camping in the gorge, but we will give you a call on our way home. Sorry the kitchen is still mid renovation. Never trust a contractor. Forty dollars is on the table to order pizza while we're gone. Well, that clears quite a few things up, doesn't it? The parents are away on a long weekend celebrating their anniversary. How about that? So, the kitchen is mid-renovation. It wasn't looted for stuff. It's been renovated. And, uh, yeah, they haven't taken off. But when was that wedding, actually? When was that wedding? Mr. Richard Morris Patrimac. Sunday the 4th of June. That's right in the middle of their anniversary. That's an odd coincidence. Anyway, what else is in this garage? Can I open and get out and run away forever? <laughs> Name tag? Sam, ask me about Clean Cosmos. Okay, well this is in the in the bin. But it looks a bit more like a wash basket, but it's in the bin. Uh yeah, that's some recyclables. Misc and other stuff. Okay, well, nothing much in here, is there? Let's go back out. And continue searching down the hall, down the long creepy hallway. I feel like I've been in this room forever. Right out. Let's see. Ah, from Barcelona. Hi, mom, dad, and Sam. I've had a wonderful time on the beaches of Barcelona, dad and Sam. I think you would like the gaudy architecture. It's from a strange alien world. I'm headed back. I'm headed to my final destination, Amsterdam. But for how long? That depends. I'm running low on money. I will look for a cheap standby ticket and call you when I'm headed home. Sorry for the short notice, can't wait to see you all again. It'll be good to be home. Okay, well, she's, she came back kind of unannounced. That's why the parents were kind of absent. Uh, we, oh. Mommy had her going away show with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. <sighs> I don't know what comes next. And I can't live without her. Then 
and she dedicated the last song to me. I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. Mm. Poor Sam and poor Lonnie. Maybe Sam called it there. Why would she do well, maybe she wouldn't do that if it was just enjoy the last time together, but it sounds like Lonnie I don't know, maybe Lonnie didn't desert. Maybe she just missed Sam because Sam had called it. She couldn't take it anymore. Too sad. I don't know, but nothing in here is particularly relevant except this. Home cooking a home cooking magazine in the toilet. Of course, of course. Why the hell not? Supplies, yep, okay. Start being a little bit faster in the searching of these rooms. I hope I'm not missing anything. All these environments. It's quite confusing. Quite, quite confusing. Right, uh, right, okay, here we go. Nothing there of interest. Bit of a industrial looking sink there. In there. <laughs> yeah, let's do our laundry. Why the hell not? Um, no, nothing here either. What's next? Oh, yes. Oh, of course. How lovely. We still don't find a key for the attic. Bunch of plants and plant growing malarkey. Turn the lamp on. Grab the book. Yep, okay. Alright, let's read this letter. Uh, dear Kaz, I can't tell you what a joy it is to see John Russell back in print. Thank you very much for the sen s for sending, al sending, sending along copies of the new editions. The cover art is really something. I know you've said that Unknown Dimension isn't in the business of printing new material, but this revived interest in my work has brought on a wave of inspiration, resulting in a manuscript that completes John Russell's journey, which I think you may find interesting. It is reflective and introspective, without forgetting the excitement and weirdness that Unknown Dimension readers expect. I hope this might be an exciting new direction for Unknown Dimension to pursue. At the very least, I am grateful that John Russell's adventures didn't come to an end quite when I thought they had. Are you kidding me? The last two minutes, three sirens have come on, all of which I've had to stop to so I can, like, make a pause to edit out. And now freaking loud asshole with an engine just revs right by the window. Shut up, Road. God sick. Okay, so he's, uh, he's trying to get more stuff out there. That's a weird noise. That's a weird noise. Strong pines. A couple's counselling retreat in the beauty of Columbia George. Of course. Of course. Of course. I kind of called it. Good time to go on the sort of their anniversary. Manuscript, huh? The Accidental Human. Interesting. I wonder if he ever got around to sending this letter. But look at him. He's got a new sort of letterhead. He's feeling more confident about, you know, his writing ability and stuff like that. So, Richard and uh, Jan maybe had this potential thing going. At least Jan kind of hoped that they did. But Richard maybe had other ideas. You know, he, he was he was in love with his girlfriend and now they're getting married. And uh, that obviously probably brought Jan down quite a bit. It's just, it, it was just a symptom. Her wanting to be with somebody else was just a symptom. Cover copy. It's been almost 20 years since John, Russell's heard the, John Russell heard the call. Twice he saved a president's life. He's practically forgotten the days of the future of danger and excitement. The days where he mattered. So when that familiar rip in time opens in front of him and the handlers peer out, he doesn't hesitate. Is the president in danger? No. The life you save this time will be your own. <laughs> I would not read these books, just saying. <laughs> what now? What now? Oh. Oh! Secret door! Yet more to explore. Midnight, June 5th. Final preparations are complete.
We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. We worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past. And there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I cried. And she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. And that's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up. And I was finally alone. Let's see what they were doing. Another panel. Come on. Uncle Oscar, you're a really weird person. Just saying. What? Okay. Oh, th thanks, Lightning, you fucking asshole. Oh. Did it? Oh, no. What are they? Great. Great. <sighs> the sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. Hmm. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic. And wait. In the attic. Something in the attic. This is going a very sad direction, poor Sam. That's a weird shadow thing. Let's close that door so that stops, shall we? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, continually gonna commentate now because it's time for the attic. Time for us to go to the attic. I'm now gonna think about it, just gonna go. Up. Here we are in the attic. Not scared. Not scared. Not scared. Oh wow, this is actually beautiful. Let's read this first. Lights. Thanks. Sam, I'll always remember what we had. Stay strong, kick ass. I love you, Lonnie. Oh my god. Katie, I, I fell asleep in the attic, in Lonnie in my old spot, and I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie, on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't... She couldn't think of anything but me, and us. And that she couldn't go through with it. With the army and being a part, and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can, and get in your car, and come find me. And let's just drive. Until we find somewhere. For us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said, yes. <laughs> yes. Woohoo, I guess. She didn't need to leave, but... Uh, oh my god, that was... I hope, I hope, I can hope. <laughs> What's this? Army jacket, holding hands with their... 
Flat lights. Good. I'm not gonna grab that bottle. All this. Empty. Empty. So she grabbed a bunch of stuff and off she went. Is that, is that it? Is that why I've been worried about? She's run off with the woman she, that she loves. I can live with that. She took everything important to them. I mean, this is a VHS player, but the Nintendo, that was the start of it. A bunch of food from, from the looks of it downstairs. That's that. Off they went. Wow. Letters to Katie. And this is everything, I guess. Everything that we've heard. Katie, I'm so sorry. That I can't be there to see you in person. That I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal, and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. And that you won't be sad, and you won't hate me, and you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again, someday. Love, Sam. Uh, credits, everybody. So I do it first, so you won't see. Nap it off, and I don't feel it. Hot as rocks and nails underneath. <laughs> and that's that well for all its mystery the story of this house was actually quite a simple one in the end I mean if you exclude everything that happened between uh, with Oscar and trying to work out the mystery behind that then it was a love story simply Sam met Lonnie they f fell in love with each other 
and they thought it was going to have to end prematurely and if you've ever been in love you'll know that it can feel like such a waste that loss all that potential squander particularly if it's affected by something that was external to the relationship such as Lonnie's uh, career choices but off they went and that's a happy ending you know when we came back and we found that note on the door and Sam didn't want to know anybody to know where she'd gone we heard Lonnie crying on the other end of the answer phone everything seems so wrong and the and the unfamiliarity and the creepiness of the house and all the secret passage stuff it's just it screams none of this is right but at the end of the day it kind of is everything is better than we thought it was when we first wandered around here and that, that kind of goes for everything as well i mean like the I guess the three main issues of this game was uh, A, Sam and Lonnie, that was the central one. B, the parents were having marital issues. And there was this guy, Rick, in the picture. And C was just the intrigue of the house and Oscar Mason, who he was. And there was a bunch of other stuff sort of surrounding it, sort of ideas thrown my way. But, I mean, Sam and Lonnie are off together. And although uh, Caitlin won't see Sam for maybe a long time, She's all right, she'll be happy. I mean, whether or not Sam and Lonnie are happy in the long term, if they're together forever, it's not really the issue. It's just they needed to see. They needed to be together right then because it was too early for them to end for whatever reason. And as for the parents, they're, you know, the dad's writing again. He's He's been published, he's sending, he's, drafting a letter to his new publisher to see if he can get him to, pu to publish the final book of that series and that's going to make him feel a lot better and I guess that kind of got him over his funk and Jan, uh, Caitlin's mother, she was kind of pining after this other Ranger Rick guy because of problems that we were having at home but that was that was a symptomatic crush I think and they're off in some sort of sort of couples counselling or so, although they haven't really met a resolution yet, they're on the right track. And ask for Oscar Mason. I mean, all that stuff about Oscar, we were interested in it as well. But everything about about Oscar, uh, the ghost in the house, which didn't really, we didn't see anything like that. We bloody heard things all, all, all the time. All that was just telling the story of how Sam and Lonnie were getting closer to each other and everything. It's like, you know, everything to do with Street Fighter. Uh, Danny, uh, the old, Sam's old friend from the old neighborhood who didn't feature in the story as much as I thought he was going to. I actually thought he might have kidnapped them or something like that because he went crazy or something along those lines, which would have been bad. He didn't feature in it as much as I thought he would. And again, that's just a way to make Sam a, a more complete character and to understand her perspective. Ne she never really had a friend like Lonnie. A lot of effort went into making this game full of complete characters. I really respect it. I will never forget this game. It's such a memorable experience and I really hope you guys enjoyed it too. The story, whilst being quite simple at the end, is still beautiful. I'm slightly disappointed I never saw a ghost or anything like that, but apart from that, <laughs> no complaints whatsoever. I don't even want to, like, criticise this game for anything. I'm sure I could if I put my mind to it, but I just, I don't feel like it. This game left such a good taste, a good aftertaste. Hmm. So that is it. That is my Let's Play of the minigame Gone Home. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I know I enjoyed playing it. So, thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I will see you in the next episode of whatever it is I'm playing. <laughs>